roughly 48 hours' time, we will know the grand finalists for 2022. There's nothing quite like the high-stakes nature of prelim final weekend. The winners set to embark on one of the most unforgettable weeks of their lives. The losers bid farewell. The Cats are through to a prelim in one of the best finals you will ever see. Sydney are going to win. They're into a prelim final. Collingwood conquer the Dockers. They're into a prelim final. Stand up, Brisbane fans. Your team are through to a prelim final. There's so much on the line, isn't there? There's no free hits. There's a grand final in front of you. The hardest part's getting there. This is everything. Four teams left. Someone's going to do it. Who's it going to be? You think about trying to stay in the moment. Well, prelim finals are hard to stay in the moment. The Demons have got four, and they are on a roll. Projecting forward to what's possible for the next week if it goes well, or you know, the feeling of it's abject depression, really. You know, if it doesn't work out, it just means the stakes are high. Half on to the grand final. These prelim finals are hard to get to, and so what you've got to try and do is when you get to them, is make the most of the opportunity. The key to it is not to get caught up in thinking about the grand final, though. The key is just to play every minute of the prelim final like it's the, the last minute you go to play. This could be a win for the ages for the Brisbane Lions. You set out to try and play finals every year to give yourself a chance to win one because they're hard to win. So if you just keep knocking out the door, at some point in time you might walk through it. It is one of the great performances. We understand the, the importance of a prelim final, but as far as the game itself and the siren goes, and we need to stay in the moment. Mills! That is brilliant! We've got some experienced players that can share that experience with the younger players as well, so that's important. But you need to experience it yourself too. And the crowd will win. You're within reach. That's reality. There's four teams left now, and we're very grateful to be one of those. And it's no longer too far away. You know, you can actually see it. They'll head to Sydney as their fairy tale season continues. What's on the end of it, having been fortunate enough to get to the grand final, you know how special that is. So for those that haven't been in that chair, you just want that so much, so you want to give more. I find it the hardest game to win. It is the purest weekend of football. football. What a weekend it will be, and it all starts tomorrow night. 6.50 uh, coverage of Geelong hosting Brisbane. That is straight after the AFLW. I did hear every coach talk about thinking too far ahead and how do you stop yourself from thinking too far ahead and going, if we just win this weekend, we're into the grand final. You've both been there. Now's, now's probably the, the most difficult time. Once, once the ball's bounced and you're in the throes of the game, well, then, then it becomes, you know, almost a bit more, a bit more instinctive. Yep. But during the week, that, that's the time when, yep. you, when you have the what-ifs, or what if we win, what if we don't, all, all of those sort of feelings that the players right now... So, so Brisbane have just arrived. They'll be, they'll be in their hotel. They're probably having dinner. They might even be watching us. So good, good luck, boys, <laughs> if, if you are. Um, but but the, the, the butterflies are just... They're consuming you at the moment. Yeah, because th there is the, the, the mental side of the game that you want to be focusing on. And, and, and playing the game in your head can be really good if you, you're playing the right actions. But the what-ifs, that's the thing. It's the what-ifs. Like, if we just get through this week, we're a chance of winning the whole thing. That, that, that's the really... I mean, that's the hard one. That you don't get caught up spending too much energy thinking about next week. When you're right, Rory, you've still got a, a really big yeah. game to go ahead this week. So a lot of the talk as we look at the team changes has been about Mark O'Connor and his job potentially on Lockie Neal, given, given he's done it in the past. He's, he's, been, uh, he's been named out, so he was the medical sub. He hasn't been brought into the 22. Are you surprised by that? Uh, a, a little bit, but I mean, this Ge Geelong, you know, that, that Geelong have options. So Cam Guthrie's a guy that's played run with roles before. Atkins, he's been a really good, important ball winner for them. He could potentially do it. Or you just have those contingencies. You have those backup plans. Whereas if Lockie Neal is getting away from you, and most importantly, the game is getting away from you, then th they'll have a plan to be able to turn to. The Cats are the king of the last change. They, they love a last little sneaky change. Do, Sean Grigg they? down there, he's, got, he's, a, he's a real <laughs> sneaky sort of operator, Sean Grigg, when it comes to tactics. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a late change. And, of course, Chris Scott, his 500th game as a player and a coach. And then 
Joel Selwood as well playing his 39th final, so that's equaling yeah. uh, Michael Tuck's record. So if they win, get through to the grand final where he was playing his 40th final, which is just extraordinary. Two seasons of finals. Yeah, two seasons it's of crazy. finals. Phenomenal. Yep. Yeah. Uh, as for the Brisbane Lions, well, these changes were expected, and that is Joe Danaher back in and Oscar McInerney. It was interesting you raised this point on the couch on yep. Monday night as to whether they will, in fact, bring... Joe Danaher back in. Yep. They've done as many have. would have expected because yeah. it would have been a pretty brutal call. Yeah, it would have been a brutal call, but I, I, I think it would have been a conversation that would have would have occurred at match really? committee. Yeah, I, I think so. Particularly when you when you consider how Eric Hipwood looks to have grown yep. when he's been the main man, yep. and I just think against Geelong. They're going to they're gonna have to do something out of the box, I think, to win this game yeah. of football. So, ball on the ground. Geelong, at times, I think, when they when they do look vulnerable, Geelong, it's ball on the deck in their back in their back half. Yeah, we, because they, they've got great marking exactly, players. Yeah. But but you, you, I mean, you've lived this yeah. against the Cats. Yeah, yeah. Tom Stewart um, has dined on sides in the air, and now when the Coney's coming through, and he's turning into that intercept type of player. Coladagny can do it. You can beat them on the ground because you know they're going to commit in the air. So the, the, oh, that's why I think Danaher's role is really important and to have those tools there. And it's not about taking big hangers and doing all the glorious things as a key forward. It's a real ground and proud night. You've got to, get, you've got to bring the ball to ground, bring Charlie Cameron into the game, McCarthy into the game on the, on the ground level because that's where they can get him. We'll delve into Brisbane. Let's delve into Geelong first. It's quite staggering, their, their record. So their eighth prelim uh, final under Chris Scott, and they've only won two. But it feels, we've been saying this all year, it feels different with Geelong this season and the changes they've made to be able to play finals football and win finals. Yeah, well, let's talk about who they are statistically because they are different. So, so the turnover game for Geelong is, is king, and we know that that games are won by the team that wins the turnover battle 80% of the time. So they're the, they're the number one team at scoring from turnover and they're not the number one team at defending turnover. It's only happened once in the last decade, and that was you boys in 2019 when you won the grand final by 89 points. So in, as far as their game is concerned, yep. they are absolutely primed. The, the, the other part of it is, and, and Chris Scott um, alluded to it as much this week, is, is they plan this to the week. Mm. They've been able to rest players. They've, mm. they've tinkered with their game style. So it stands up now, this time of year. All of the planning that has been done by Chris Scott, and it required so much bravery to do it because they were coming from such a strong base, is about this weekend. Yeah, it solely is, is backing in your, your boys and backing in your system. I'll tell you the other thing I've liked, and it's only it may be a little minor thing, there's been no conversation of, oh, why aren't we playing down to GMHBA? They've embraced this final series. They've embraced this year. I mean, Chris Scott uh, on AFL 360 at the start of the year came in with a plan, and they've stuck yeah. to it. So there's been the noise around and just saying, you're, they're like embracing the fact that you're yeah. in, you, you know you're in a good spot. The fact that half of GMHBA is a building site at the yeah. moment probably, probably, doesn't probably, help, but, probably but, plays but into it, it. But it comes around every yeah. time they, they play a final at the MCG. It's, oh, well, why aren't we playing at our home ground? And yeah. usually there's... There's a two-week conversation, a two-day conversation, sorry, on radio about it and talkback radio, but there's been no conversation about that. They've really embraced that, that imperfection of, of, yeah, we're playing away from home, but it's still a home game for us. And they're not reliant on one or two players definitely playing. We had this conversation with Patrick Dangerfield and how desperate he would be to, to win a premiership, given it's the only thing missing from his resume. But he doesn't have that burden of, I have to play well in order yep. for us to win. Yeah, so... It's in previous years, I mean, the, the, the streak they've been on is unbelievable. In, in previous years, this time of year, we've spoken about danger. Does he have to play mid? Does he have to play forward? He probably has to have 30 and kick three for the Cats to get across the line. They are so much more... They are so f better balanced, particularly in front of the ball. We, with Cameron now, the form he's in, with Stengel being able to hit the scoreboard, Gary Rowan's a big big in back into the, into the side. We saw him play extremely well against Collingwood. So the pressure on danger... The desperation is as high as ever. The pressure's probably been as low on him individually as it has been since he got there. Do you think he's taken the pressure off himself as well? Because he, he's piled himself onto that, that pressure on himself because he's, he is that player where he picks up a side and he drags them over the line. That's been his, that's been his go-to for the last decade. I, I feel just from, just from his body language and the way he's gone about it this year is that he's actually sort of thought, oh, mate, maybe if I do less... There'll be more for the team. But there's also been things forced upon him, hasn't there? Like starting injury. quarters on the bench, yep. being rested. I mean, a lot, lot has been taken yeah. out of their hands. I'd love to know well. if there's a conversation had at the start of the year about what his role looked like this year. Yeah. 
It would have been fascinating. Well, we mentioned how perfectly placed Geelong seem heading into this prelim final, and even the coach conceded that they couldn't be better placed. We wouldn't change a thing. We certainly wouldn't have lost the first week so we could play last week. Um, this is our preference, and we've had a lot of time to think through how we were going to prepare with our training. So we go in feeling really confident in our preparation and you know, really running um, on top of the ground. The guys that needed extra work have got it. Um, the guys that needed a freshen up have got it. So, yeah, we, we feel, um, you know, a level of anxiousness that every competitor feels going into these games, but really confident in our preparation. So we try to pick out the holes and, and maybe this isn't going to work in their yeah. favour. And we talk about that playing one game in three weeks. You've been there and done that. What are your thoughts on it? Oh, I think it comes down solely to training. Uh, and that's why you've got a, that 44 on your list is that sides like Geelong that are, that are one game in, I think it's 27 days, uh, you'd re you recreate what a game, and that would uh, recreate what a game is a week out. So that was our go-to. We'd have a bit of a scratch hit out, sort of three quarters, maybe just over a half to replicate um, a, a sort of good hit out. Um, so that, that, that's what they would have done this weekend. They would have prepped themselves. They'd be hardened to come in. And I think, I mean, there's enough older guys down there to know that they need to come in and perform and, and they can perform off a break because they've been practising it. They've had guys that have had, had bias and had, sorry, had rests and had bias this year and, and have come out and performed. Which I think is how Melbourne dealt with it last week and then even John Longmire said today, you just use that week off to have a hard training session, almost like a match. Yeah, it's, it's hardy yeah. mouth sort of stuff, though, for the hard training session. I think the coach sits on the sideline and just goes... It and is. Get through, it, it is, and it can be confidence-killing yeah. because, of, like, quite often the reserves, yeah. they know exactly how the, exactly. the ones are trying to play and yeah. they serve it up to them. So yeah. you're going into a prelims thinking... Well, got you just got beat by the VFL team. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about the Brisbane Lions? They're coming off one of their great victories, knocking off the rating previous at the end. MCG last Friday night and we love the access the Lions give us. This was Chris Fagan post-game. Well, we did. So, Blueberry, it's right. Think really positively um, about about what we're what we're paying for, and let's go there and give a shot. All right. <laughs> Nothing like that belief you get when a coach says, everyone said we couldn't do it and we mm. just did it. it. We had been speaking at length about their record at the MCG. They, they win there for the first time since 2014 and now they could make it back-to-back -back wins at the G in as many weeks. They could, but, but they need to go to another level again because, for me, they're the outlier of the top, of the four teams that are left. So we've seen Geelong... The, the Geelong-Collingwood game, you know, for the first in the first week of the finals was unbelievable with pressure and intensity and effort. Sydney have delivered the same. For me, Brisbane have not shown that cons level of consistency with application, particularly defensively, like the other three teams. So they did it in the second half against Melbourne. They cranked their pressure up to 214. If they are going to have any chance in this game, they need to deliver a four-quarter performance. Because even in the first half last week against the Dees, they, they weren't at the level. They were lucky at court. They, they were not at the level with you know, committing their bodies yeah. in contest, defensive pressure, chasing, all of that sort of stuff. To their credit, they cranked it up, mm. and that's why it was such an unbelievable win, because you couldn't see it coming. Yeah, they really roll with momentum. So, they, like, I mean, they, they probably were a little bit lucky at quarter time that Melbourne weren't um, as clear, sorry, as clean with their disposal and shots on goal. So... I actually think that the, the bigger ground of the MCG suits a side like Brisbane um, compared to Geelong. Like, and I love the storyteller aspect of, of Chris Fagan. The way that he embraces the history, and you know he's, he's sort of tongue-in-cheek there, we haven't won here for 100 years. <laughs> I think it was 2014 when they last won there. But that aspect of just taking his guys along the journey, even back to the start of the final series when he spoke about well, we've, ha we've had a... We've had our kicks in the guts and, and we've learned from it and, we, and he felt like his group had grown and he, and he really believed that, that, that they can go on and win the Premiership this year. That, I love that aspect of a coach. It's a really important fact and they'll be backs against the wall this week mm -hmm. and if they can put a full, full game of performance in like the pressure in the second half... That's it. Mm -hmm. They can't that, win that, without it. They, 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 they can do. win, yep. but they can't win without yep. that pressure. 